When I first introduced caches, I introduced these four questions about how a cache would work. The first question was, when we bring data from the memory into the cache, where should we put it? And the answer we found was that we're going to define something called an index which says where in the cache it's going to go, whether it's a direct map or a set associative cache. Second was, how can we tell if the data that we want is already in the cache? And the answer was that we're going to tag all of our data so that when we look at a given index in our cache, we can say, is the data that we're looking for the data that's in the cache? Third was, when the cache, or more specifically, a set of the cache fills up and we want to put new data into the cache, what data should we replace? We introduced the concept of least recently used, or LRU, to say, we're going to kick out the data that we think we're least likely to use, that is, the data that we haven't used for the longest time. But in this video, we're going to focus on this fourth problem, which is how to handle write operations in our memory system. So writing to the cache brings up two particular issues. The first is, if the data is in our cache already, how should we handle writes? So for this example, we're going to consider a direct map cache. And for this given address and data in memory, you can see that we've taken this value and put it in our cache, that our index 110 and the rest of the bits of the address are the tag 11010. If we want to write to that address, if we're going to perform a store to this address with a new value, then we potentially create an inconsistency that the value in the cache is not the value that's stored in memory for that address. One solution to the problem is to use what's called a write-through cache. And a write-through cache is going to solve this inconsistency problem directly by writing not only to the data in the cache, but also update memory at the same time. So if we visualize our processor, which is on the same chip as our data cache, we're not going to only write to the data cache, but we're also going to send that data down to the main memory uh, and update those both at the same time. So logically, this is pretty simple to implement, and it's great because it keeps the cache and the memory consistent. But why is this not such a good option? Well, when we introduced the idea of caches, we did so because main memory was slow. So one of the reasons that we don't consider write-through caches is performance. And you may think the main issue is latency, but it turns out that latency is not the main issue. And the reason why is even though it takes many cycles to write to the main memory, we can avoid stalling the processor because as soon as we've updated the cache, it's safe to continue because if we need the value again, we can get that value from cache, that we can complete the right many cycles later, sort of in the background. And so the way that most processors handle this is by having what's called a write buffer, where when we complete a store, we're going to put that store into this write buffer and in the background allow that value to be copied to main memory. So latency itself is not a problem. Really, the main problem is the other kind of performance, which is bandwidth. And the reason why bandwidth is a problem is that we can not only write to the cache faster, we can do many more writes per unit time because we have many wires that connect the processor to the cache, but because the memory's off chip, we have many fewer wires connecting the processor to main memory. And so this connection is going to be much lower bandwidth. And as a result, as we put stores into this write buffer, they're not going to drain nearly as fast as the processor can, can produce stores. And so this write buffer will fill, which will ultimately cause the processor to stall. So it's really the fact that the memory has much lower bandwidth, which is the problem, because we'll fill this write buffer, and at that point the processor will have to stall. And so the alternative strategy, which is used much more commonly, is what's called a write-back cache. And in a write-back cache, we're going to add one extra piece of data to the cache block, which is a dirty bit. And when we first load data from memory, 
into the cache, we're going to set this dirty bit to zero because the data in the cache is consistent with the data in memory. When we write to this block of memory that is stored in the cache, we're going to update the value in the cache block and at that time we're going to mark the data as dirty and that dirty bit indicates that the data that we've stored in the cache is now inconsistent with the data that's stored in memory. So we haven't we haven't dealt with the inconsistency yet but we've made a note to ourselves that we need to deal with this inconsistency at some point in the, in the future. And it turns out the inconsistency itself is not the problem because if I have a future load to this address then I'm going to look in the cache first and the cache is going to tell me the current value. So the fact that the value in main memory has, is incorrect is not an immediate problem. The main problem is that we don't want to lose this new value. Um, we want it to eventually get back to main memory. And we do that by doing that when we replace the block. So really what we're doing is we're lazily writing to memory. We're trying to defer that as long as possible. And the latest that we can defer it is to the point where we're going to overwrite that block in the cache. So in this scenario there's data at another address and in this address also happens to share the same index of the data that's currently in the cache. And so when we do a load to this address we see we get a miss in the cache and we see ah the data is dirty and so I need to first write this data back to main memory and then when I've completed that then I can take this new data and put it into the cache. So we've deferred the write back, which is what we're doing at this point, um, until we replace the block with a new block. So to summarize, in order to implement write back, we need to add a dirty bit to each cache block in our cache. And the main advantage of a write back cache is that we're going to avoid doing a write operation to main memory on every access. That it's only when we displace a block from the cache that we need to write it back to main memory. And this is a big win because typically we'll write to the same address or to the same block many times before we displace it. And the reason why is because of temporal and spatial locality. And this means that we're going to amortize the cost of writing the block back to main memory over all of those writes to the cache block. So the consequence is, is that writes to a cache block are fast, but we've moved a bit of the penalty of copying it back to main memory to the subsequent bringing in the next block. So uh, our writes are only going to affect the cache directly, but when we load that new value in, it's going to create two memory accesses. One to write the block back to main memory, and the other to bring the new data into the cache. And it turns out that we can actually do this write in the background the same way we were talking before with write through, that we can add a write buffer in order to put that data aside and uh, copy it back to main memory in the background. So that's the first issue with caches is how to handle writes when the data is in the cache. The second scenario is what happens if we try to write to an address that's not already in the cache. This is what we would call a write miss, that we're trying to do a write and we get a cache miss. So Let's imagine for a moment that we have some data in the cache and we go to do a store to an address that maps to that index but the tags don't match. So we've got a write miss, we want to write to this value. Um, what should we do? Uh, should we write the data into the cache which means we need to bring the block in and then overwrite the value or should we leave the value the where it is, leave this cache block alone, and write directly to main memory?
So the first strategy is what's called allocate on write. And in allocate on write, we're going to do the write in the cache. We're going to first copy the block from main memory into the cache. And then when it's there, we're going to update its value. And so we're going to write directly in the cache. If we're doing write through, we're also going to write to the main memory. If we're implementing write back, we won't write to the memory directly. We'll defer that until later. So this is a good policy in general because if the data is needed soon, then when we load it, it's in the cache for us. Um, and this is common, again, for example, like the stack, that if we, if we start a program when we, the first thing we do is write some stuff to our stack, that's going to force that cache block to be brought into our cache, and so it's going to be there when we need to load that value back. And so typically, this is the baseline behavior you have in most processors, that when you miss on a store, you're going to bring the cache block into the cache. Um, and for all the reasons of temporal and spatial locality, this seems to be a pretty good policy in general. But what about code like the following? So in this code example, we're writing to an array element. Um, we're actually writing to all of the elements of an array because we're doing it in a loop. And it looks like it's a very large array. And so um, imagine for a moment that the data is actually larger than the cache. So what consequence would executing this piece of code with an allocate on write policy have? Well, because the data is larger than the cache and that we're bringing the data into the cache, we're going to displace all of the data from our cache. We're going to kick out whatever was in our cache and at the end of executing this loop, our data cache is going to be completely filled with this array. And this may not be what we want to do because we may not be using this array sometime in the future. And even if we are, we may we have the, the end of the array cached in our cache and maybe we want at the beginning of the array. Um, so sometimes it's the right thing to do is not to bring the data into the cache. Instead, what we'd like to do is either what's called a write around, which is we're going to write around the cache directly to memory, or what's called a write no allocate, which is just saying we're not going to allocate data in the cache on a store miss. Um, these are two names for the same thing. Um, and in this policy, what we're going to do is we're going to take that write and we're going to write directly to memory preserving the cache the way that it is. Um, so it's, it's nice um, to be able to invoke this policy when we want, that in general, the allocate on write policy is the right one to do, but we'd like to, for specific circumstances, we'd like to be able to mark stores to use a write around policy. And so some modern architectures allow you to do this using a separate opcode for a store in what's called a non-temporal store. And what you're trying to communicate with this non-temporal store to the machine is, this is a store whose value I'm unlikely to use any time in the future. And so feel free to write to memory directly. Don't bother bringing the data into the cache and preferably don't kick the stuff I have in the cache out in order to store this data. So with that, it allows the programmer or the compiler to choose which policy it wants to use on any given um, operation. So those are the two main issues that we need to deal with for stores, which is uh, how do we handle writes that hit in the cache and how do we handle writes that miss in the cache.